managerial accounting, co uh, process costing. We're looking at how much does a product cost. Now, if you're a manager of a production process, basically you have to track two things in order to determine how much something costs. You have to track your costs, and we know those costs include your direct materials, your direct labor, and your overhead. And that overhead is what? Applied overhead and determined either by the traditional method or by ABC. So these are our costs. And we, have, and we might have some costs associated with the beginning inventory, right? So this is all the costs that that manager is accountable for. And the manager then has to figure out how much of those costs were transferred out. And they're transferred out either to finished goods, if the products are completed, in other words, that's the cost of the goods manufactured, or they're transferred out to the next work in process department. In other words, if um, this was the assembly department for the water, we're transferring out to the next work in process department, which is called work in process packaging, until that product is done. And that gives you my favorite journal entry in process costing. It's debit work in process, the next department, credit, work in process, this department. So it's the whip, whip entry. So as the products are made and transferred from one department to another, it's debit whip, credit whip. So that's the entry that's new in this chapter. Uh, so not only does the manager have to track their costs, and assign them to what's transferred out or what's still left in the department, in other words, the ending inventory. But we also have to track the units because, you know, you don't want to lose anything because it's spilled on the floor, an employee stole it, um, it was ruined in the production process. So we have to track our units. So when we look at this, we look at our units that could be in beginning inventory. We'll look at the units that were started. In other words, how much ingredients did we put in uh, that we know should make so many of our products. And we know that those units are either transferred out or they're still with me in ending inventory. But in in any case, the manager is accountable for the units and the costs. Now you're saying, well, this, this makes perfect sense, so what's the big deal about process costing? The big deal about process costing is that process costing businesses run 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. They never stop. So when you get to December 31st, stroke of midnight, last day of the year, last hour, time to cut off to make that beautiful income statement that year, you've got goods still being processed through your plant. And so somehow you've got to say, time out, I need to assign some of these costs to transferred out and some of these costs to the ending inventory. Because at the stroke of midnight, you're a certain percentage complete as far as your products are concerned. And you got to know what cost of goods manufactured and sold is, don't you? Because you got to tell the truth on that lovely income statement. So our goal this chapter is to be able to assign these costs that we know the actual costs of, which is the materials, the labor, and the applied overhead, to either the goods that are transferred out of our department or are still with us. So we're going to be finding how much does it cost for the ending inventory and how much does it cost for the cost of the goods manufactured in our department that were transferred out either to finished goods or work in process. So we're going to be doing what we call a process cost report or a production report, and they're big, long things. And you're going to say halfway through, why are we doing this? And the reason we're doing it is to assign a value to ending inventory and to the goods transferred out. 
So that's what we're about.